So we'll start our showcase that ends our local loon tales discussion for the evening. We'll show you about uh, a dozen or so slides that uh, we're proud of, that we've been able to photograph over the years that we call our showcase. Uh, this is an image of what you often see of common loons when you approach their nest for the first time. They'll lower their head and uh, try to not be seen. We use uh, 600 millimeter lenses to photograph, so we're back probably 100 feet away from this loon, and you can still see we're able to get a tremendous image size on this loon. This is an nest at Swan Lake, oh. nest at Ferry Lake. I like this image also. <laughs> I think the yellow is in there. So the this is blue, one yellow. chick here. And this is another chick here that can't face the world. He's under the wing. Uh, he's got some issues. Beautiful image from Swan Lake. This is her first chick. And she was so thrilled with it. All she could do was coo and coo and go, ooh, ooh, ooh. And she was touching it repeatedly with her bill, patting it. And she also takes her chicks back to the nest at night and incubates them. Um, she does this every year for seven, nine, ten days, maybe longer. And the Bonaparte <laughs> female does did that, the old one, the former one, and also fairy like. So you'll see in books written, once they leave the nest, they never go back, don't believe it. Uh, this is an image that was on the first uh, Loon book that we have published with our images. Uh, this is at South Twin Lake, a bird we call Bandit. Um, this is Dagger at Swan Lake protecting his chick. I want to go back to Bandit. Quick story. Bandit expired from ingesting fishing line and she expired on her nest and she crushed the chick that was in the shell ready to hatch. The other chick hatched and was off the nest. But in the necropsy, we found out why she was always off key. I found that loons, loons, Julie, you may know this, they sing in the key of C. My daughter-in-law is a musician, and that's what she told me. I'm not musical, but this is what she said. Bandit, she would, when she would make a wail, she would go, I mean, off key, it was like, oh my gosh, I feel so sorry for this loon. She didn't know how to sing. We thought she was worse. Yeah, and we found out that she had a curvature. She had been hit by a boat. And she had a curvature and old fractures in her cervical spine, which curved her syrinx, which would then alter the air coming out to make her song. And here we are thinking, oh, this poor loon can't sing. You know, and we, we have no there idea. No reason. There was a reason. So this is Dagger at Swan Lake. Uh, another rogue loon is flying into Swan Lake and he's protecting his chick, offering his wing there. These chicks are about a week and a half old, I would guess. Yeah, I don't know the lake on this one, maybe you don't know. But you can see how small they are compared to their parents. That's the size of a fish that they can swallow. You can see the little chick here with his head. The female at North Twin, when an eagle would come, she had her chick under her wing and she would take the chick down with her. We've never seen a loon do that. Um, keep the chick under the wing until she came up. And it was very effective because if the chick separates from the adult, they're easy prey for the eagles. So that's how they learn to die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is vocalization. Uh, this is a loon making a whale call. These are images that we've taken from our different watercraft over the years. And Dan Furlong, you've seen a number of iterations of those watercraft. We've kind of finalized to something that functions pretty well now, and Dan has helped us with design and welding over the years, which we really appreciate. Oh, 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 oh. On all of the 
chick images, you'll notice one chick's a little bit bigger, and that one's usually the first one that hatched, and he's dominant, and he'll peck at the other one. And sometimes you think they're going to kill each other, you know? Oh my gosh. And they'll have these battles until the younger, the new chick submits, and he has to put his head down, and all you'll see are little eyes up above the water because he's being submissive, and he has to be that way for the entire three months that they spend as chicks. He's always submissive. So boring. Mm -hmm. So this is Stubby and his brother. <laughs> and here's about three or four days later, they grow so rapidly. You can see now there's a lot more federation and larger size to the wing. <laughs> you see mom and dad uh, arching back and flexing their wings, so they figure it must be something wings do. And this is an adult bringing in a fry for the... That's yeah. That's, that moon when he came up, an eagle was flying overhead, and he was going to feed a little bit older chicks. When he saw the eagle, he gave an alarm call, and he actually held on to the fish. The time he's calling, you know, oh, there's an eagle. He didn't want to give the fish up. And this is an image taken at third place, just after this bird captured the trout. What kind of trout is that, guys? Rainbow. Rainbow trout. Uh, beavers at North Twin Lake and loons didn't like each other. Uh, this, this loon and its mate built a nest about 20 feet from a beaver lodge, and they harassed each other for the whole two months they were there. <laughs> and this is one of those occasions. A beaver would dive and, and swim right underneath a loon. Uh, the beaver doesn't want to kill a loon, you know, they have no use for eating a loon, they're vegetarians. But they just didn't want the, the loons in that area, so it's all about territoriality. This is a loon that uh, came in and built next to our boat. This is actually a loon from interior um, Canada. It's smaller, and when it landed, compared to the loons at Meadow Lake, it looked like a pony and the other loons look more horse size. And I thought at first it was great because it was so small, but it's, um, a, a, many of the loons now we're finding the smaller size loons are migrating through Washington. And they nest more commonly in the interior part of North America because migration is easier for them because of their smaller size. So the larger loons like we have in Washington and like those in Maine, and uh, Vermont and New Hampshire are larger loons. They don't migrate very far. They go to Lake Pateros, the Columbia River, many of the loons go there, and Puget uh, <coughs> Sound or along the uh, Pacific shoreline. So it's always fascinating to see common loon chicks fly for the first time. That's yellow. This is yellow taking flight. This is how they learn to take off, and I can tell you this probably won't be a successful takeoff because the water is much too calm, and these birds haven't learned yet to try to fly only when they have a strong headwind because you get so much additional lift. So when there's waves that are six inches or greater in height, it's much easier for loons to take off by heading into the wind. So they don't learn this at first. Uh, and we see a lot of failed uh, attempts at flying before they actually are able to do it. And then when they actually take flight for the first time, they head down toward the trees at the far end of the lake and suddenly it's like, holy cow, what do I do now? And so we've seen crash landings, we've seen uh, a few birds land into the cattails and some actually hit trees, but survive. Uh, and then most of them make this crazy looking corner and almost fall in the water and then just pull it out at the last second. You know, avoid a disastrous landing. And those are small lakes he's yeah. talking about. Yeah. Which most of our lakes are. Yeah. So this is how they, the adults take off. This is how they land. They come in and uh, touch down with their feet first and then they do a belly flop and skate on the water for 20 or 30 feet. And if you're out in a boat and a loon is landing close to you, when they're coming down, they say, they sound like a 747. <laughs> coming, you can look around, where's that plane? So we're just about at the end here. Um, 
some images that we thought you would like to see. I'll drive through them. This is a sunrise at Fairy Lake. And uh, Moon Yodeling. And, That's uh, Lost Lake. And this is in uh, foggy conditions. This is at Lake Alhai in the fall of the year. Uh, this is uh, a very scenic occasion in the fog at Swan Lake. This is Meadow Lake, Swan Lake again. Ross Lake, the treasure. This is uh, Alhai Lake. And I don't know where that is. So thank you very much. We've enjoyed this. So oh, Really, uh, whatever you think is good. Uh, we ran over on the time reserve. People have questions. Yeah. Uh, those of you that need to leave, do so. And those that want to stand by for questions, do so. Okay, so before anybody leaves, just a couple of things. Um, it'd be great if you could have some help with the chairs before everybody gets gone. And when we stack them, we have to stack the ones without arms, alternating with the ones with arms. Otherwise, it gets all jammed up. And we're going to pile them over. Kolo is standing for a Can you wave your hand? Right back there. That's where we're going to pile the chairs. Um, you're going to have your help with that. And then just mark your calendars for January 4th. That's my next time on this event about mosses with our Lazy Art Expert, Erica Henry. So if you want to stick around for questions, we can take a few questions now. Please. Thanks, Julie. There's one question somebody asked me. Why is it that limbs are called very up? Looney said, why, why do they call them crazy? Crazy as a loon. Okay. Being crazy as a loon, I believe, comes from the loons have a terminal call. That's an alarm call, and it goes woo, 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 over and over and over. And people call that the laughing call. They say they're laughing, but it's actually an alarm call. And there's different levels for that. And when we were with Jeff and Steve Desimone at, at where Green was nesting, I think you were there, Jeff, um, the loons were flying to the end of the lake and tremoloing, flying, and uh, creating a great uproar. And there are two people fishing at the boat dock, and, they said, and the girls said to me, I said, well, how are the loons? Have you seen a chick? And she said, oh, the loons are just going crazy. They're as crazy as a loon. And then the, the male came flying down. He's looking all over the lake and, and making that tremoloing sound as he's flying. And I went, oh, no. I said, he's not laughing. He's not crazy. He just lost his chick. He's looking for his chick. And sure enough. That, that was the reason. So it's mistaken. People mistake alarm and stress as a weapon call and crazy as a So is there another one? One more? Spring, uh, 